we will discuss methods of proof of an implication. So far, we have used truth tables to specify propositional functions including the basic functions involving a single logical connectives. We have also encountered uh, tautologies which are foundations upon which valid inference are based. Now, we shall apply valid inference patterns to validate nine common methods for proving implications. These will be required, these will be referred to as methods of proof. So, the first method of proof is trivial proof. of P implying Q. If it is possible to establish that Q is true, regardless of the truth value, of P, then P implying Q is true. Now, this happens because if we see the truth table of P implies Q, We see that when P is F and Q is F, that is P and Q both are false, then P implies Q is true. When P is false and Q is true, then P implies Q is true. When P is true and Q is false, then P implying Q is true. And when P is true and Q is true, then P implies Q is true. This means that if it so happens that we know that Q is always true, then P implies Q is true regardless of what happens to P. This is of course, uh, trivial and hence it is called 
the trivial proof. The second method of proof is vacuous proof. If it is possible to establish that Q is true. No, I will reward this. So, here if p is shown to be false regardless of the truth value of q, then also p implying q is true. If p is shown to be false, regardless of the truth value of Q, then P implies Q is true. We see this if we again look at the truth table of p implies q we see that this portion of the truth table says that p implies q is true if p is fixed to f that is p is false whatever be the values of q. Next we move on to direct proof of p implies q. The construction of a direct proof of P implies Q begins by assuming that P is true and then F 
from the available information from the reference frame the conclusion q is shown to be true by valid inference. So, direct proof is indeed direct, we have to prove P, P implies Q. So, we will assume that the proposition P is true and then use the valid inferences and the information available in the reference frame and to step by step deduce that Q is true if q is true whenever p is true then the uh, proposition p implies q is true The fourth method of proof is indirect proof of P implies Q. This is basically the direct proof of the contrapositive. We recall that if we have a proposition P implies Q, then contrapositive of that proposition is not of Q implies not of P and P implies Q and not of Q implies not of P are equivalent statements. Therefore, if we can prove that negation of Q implies negation of P, then we have proved P implies Q. We need to work out this proof in two steps. I am coming to that. Indirect proof proceeds as follows. A assume Q is false, B prove on the basis of that assumption
and the available information from the frame of reference that P is false. Five proof of P implies Q by contradiction. This method exploits the fact that P implies Q is true if <coughs> and only if P and negation of Q is false. Now, we have seen that P implies Q is equivalent to the statement negation of P or Q. If we take negation of P or Q and negation of that, then this is equivalent to negation of negation of P and negation of Q, this is by De Morgan's law. and which in turn is equivalent to P and negation of Q. Therefore, if we can prove that P and negation of Q is false, then the negation of that which comes from here that is P uh, negation of P or Q is true and conversely. The proof by contradiction is a very powerful tool and to implement such a proof we have to go step wise. Now I write the steps of the proof by contradiction. A assume that P and 
uh, q uh, ne uh, negation of q is false. Assume that this is true, uh, not false, in the contrary, start by assuming that P and Q uh, complement uh, that is not negation of Q is true. Step B discover on the basis of that assumption some conclusion that is patently false. C. Then the contradiction in the step B leads us to conclude that the assumption A is false. then the contradiction in step B leads us to conclude that the assumption in step A is false. In step A, we assumed that P and negation of Q is true. So, that means that P and negation of Q is false. This will imply that P negation of Q negation of that, that is negation of P or Q, which is in turn equivalent to P implies Q is true. This is what is known as the proof by contradiction. The sixth method is proof of P implies Q by cases.
Now, here we are in a situation where P can be split up into uh, or of several propositions P 1, P 2 up to P n and uh, we are encountering a proposition like this which is P 1 uh, or P 2 or and so on up to or P n implies Q where the left hand side is essentially P. Now, what we note that we can establish this fact by proving smaller implications such as P 1 implies Q, P 2 implies Q and P, P, P n implies Q. If all of them are true, then this is also true. The seventh method is proof by elimination of cases. If V are confronted with two alternatives P has to be true or Q has to be true if we are able to verify that P is false, then we must conclude that Q is true. This method of proof is essentially disjunctive syllogism from another perspective. If P Q are two propositions, then disjunctive syllogism is uh, as follows. Here we see that in the two propositions, if P or Q is true and if we know that P is not true, then that will imply Q is true. We can extend this for finite number of cases as follows. if P 1 up to P n are n propositions, then 
then P1 or P2 or Q and P1 negation, P2 negation neg uh, and and so on P n negation this is Q is a tautology. Next. The two propositions P implies Q implying R and P and Q implies R are equivalent. Therefore, P implies Q implies R can be proved as follows. Combine the two antecedents P and Q B, then prove R on the basis of the assumption. Now, we have come to the last method of proof that we discuss in this lecture. proof of equivalence. Now, suppose we have a biconditional P if and only if Q and we would like to prove it. Proof of equivalence says that it is enough to prove separately the direct implication P implies Q and its converse Q implies P and this is proof of implication. Now that we have discussed some methods of proofs of implications, we must also remember that these are not all the possible methods, there are other methods as well but these are the methods which are very commonly used and it is a good idea to try to formulate the proofs based on these methods. We will now look at uh, examples of proofs 
uh, uh, constructed by using proof by contradiction and the proof by contrapositive. So, first let us uh, check uh, proof by contradiction. Suppose that ten integers one, two up to ten are randomly positioned. around a circle or a circular circular wheel show that the sum of some set of three consecutively positioned numbers is at least 17. So, I read again. Now, suppose I have got 10 integers 1, 2 up to 10 and I have a circular wheel with 10 positions and at each position I am putting some number may be 1, 2, 4 and so on like that. What I am claiming is that there is a there is three consecutive, consecutive positions such that if I add up the numbers placed in those three consecutive positions then it will be at least 17 no matter in which way I arrange the numbers uh, between 1 to 10 around the circular wheel. So, we start the proof by defining x i which is the integer positioned at the position i of the wheel. Now, we have to prove that either x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 greater than or equal to 17 or x 2 plus x 3 plus x 4 greater than or equal to 17 and so on lastly or x 10 plus x 1 plus x 2 greater than or equal to 17. So, we want to prove this, we want to prove that one of at least one of these 
one of these conditions must hold. Now, we prove by contradiction. So, we say that let us suppose that it does not hold. So, if it does not hold, then what will hold? We will have if the above is not true, then x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 less than 17. Please uh, check that it is strict inequality, then x 2 plus x 3 plus x 4 this is also less than 17 and so on up to x 10 plus x 1 plus x 2 less than 17 and this is and all of this must hold because if one of them is not true then that sum is greater than or equal to 17 and that means my proposition is correct. So, suppose this is true. Now, we add up all these inequalities to obtain 3 times. So, we are assuming that this is true. So, that means that 3 times x 1 plus and so on up to x 10 is less than Ten less than or equal to ten into sixteen, which is equal to one sixty. Now we remember that x one up to x ten are distinct integers between one to ten. So we can add them up to obtain ten into eleven divided by two into three, which gives me 165 and if our assumption is true then 165 is less than or equal to 160 which is of course false. So, this is a contradiction but all the logical inferences that we have used are valid. Therefore, through a valid logical inference we are finding that truth is implying a something false. That means, that the premise cannot be true and therefore, from this we can conclude that our original assumption is true. That is there are consecutive three numbers always whose sum is greater than or equal to 17. This is an example of a proof by contradiction. As a last topic of today's lecture, we will discuss an example of a proof by contrapositive.
the statement that he would like to prove is if the product of two integers a and b is even then either a is even or b is even. Now, we denote the antecedent by the proposition p that is a b is even and q denotes the consequent a is even or b is even. We want to prove that p implies q. We start with not of q. Not of q is a is odd and b is odd. This is by using De Morgan's laws. So, we know that A is, we are assuming that A is odd and B is odd. Therefore, A can be written as 2 m plus 1 and B can be written as 2 n plus 1. If we take the product A B, then this is 2 m plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 which gives me 2 times 2 m n plus m plus n plus 1. Now, we see that a plus b is odd sorry a into b is odd that is the product of a b is odd. Therefore, negation of p is true. Thus, we have proved that if negation of q is true that is whenever negation of q is true negation of p is true. Therefore, we have proved the implication negation of q implies negation of p which is equivalent to p implies q. This is proof by using contrapositive. And this is the end of today's lecture. Thank you.